Time for what? Time for what? Experience in college. Time for reinforcement. Time for liftoff! Where nothing is impossible unless you think it is impossible. It's college, impossible. college. It's impossible. my college scholarship. Yes. Well, college ran by real fast. You hung in with the best college. Touchdown! First time for everything. Well, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Let's do this thing. Genius, let's do this thing! Hi, everyone. Welcome to another podcast. And I thought today's guest will be myth or truth. There's all these changes that are happening in admissions. And I'll be honest, I'm a little bit excited about all the changes because it allows students to be their best. And isn't that what all colleges want is a great student, a great applicant who will make their campus better without focusing on other items like a number. So let's go over some myths or truths. So are you ready? Are you ready to listen? You got your thinking caps on. So let's go. Question number one, you can increase your chances of admission by changing your profile to fit what you believe each individual admissions committee is looking for truth or myth myth why is that a myth well keep in mind that again you can every year each college has a different directive what they're looking for um what their campus needs in general so you never will know what they need maybe one year they need a flute player for their band guess what the next year they're not going to next question Committees changes all the time, but each is looking to craft a well-rounded freshman class based on the current pool of applicants. Second guessing will only deter you from being yourself. The truth of the matter is, if they don't want you to begin with, then you don't want them. Myth or truth? Truth. Yes. Yeah, so college reps are going to change all the time. So you just got to be, um, be you, be your best. Right. Kind of gave you the answer earlier. All right. Taking a serious class like an AP physics looks better on your transcript rather than, let's say, something that you've done a lot of work in, like art, such as AP Studio Art. Is that a myth or truth? Well, that's a myth. If you are just as great artist and your school offers AP Studio Art, love high schools that do that. Um, that's really amazing. And to kind of show that passion, how you've made some accomplishments is so important, right? Maybe physics is not your thing, right? You need that higher level algebra two thinking on there. And what if you struggle in that class and don't have a good grade? So you really want to focus on challenge, yes, but also something that you're engaged in and love. So notice the and on there. Okay, you can start the application process uh, really late, like in 12th grade year. You don't have to start early. Myth or truth? Well, technically, it's both a myth or truth. What, what I mean by that is, yeah, you could start at 12th grade year. I know those kids, but the stress and the common mistake, oh my God, how many mistakes are on there? And you're going to forget some details that maybe that stood out in ninth grade year. Remember, they're looking from ninth through 12th grade, all your information. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, next question. An A in a regular pace course looks better than a B in an honors AP course because your overall GPA would be a lot higher. Well, remember, they're not just looking at a number anymore. Yay. They're looking at the type of courses, how you challenge yourself. So you're going for that easy A. They smell that, right? You know, when someone's being phony to you, right? You know, if someone is not being sincere, being sincere to their education. Remember, this is about relationships. So we're dealing with professionals here in college admissions. So you have to be really aware of that. So they will look not only at you taking that challenge course, but also don't forget, they're looking at your progression since ninth grade year as well, too. All right. Colleges are looking for highly motivated students who challenge themselves with increasingly difficult courses, even if it adversely affects their overall GPA. Right. So, you know, the answer to this, right? Myth or truth? You were listening earlier. That's a truth. OK, here's a big question, especially with this test optional error we're in. 
Your SAT score is the most important part of your application, and you got a 1600, basically a perfect score. You're basically into the school. That is a big myth, right? If schools like Caltech or UCLA, Irvine are going test-free, a.k.a. test-blind, but that's why we're using test-free. It's not very appropriate that way. There, The test doesn't say everything about you, but if you are like, growing algae in your room or making a device so your dog could exercise on their own, that's saying a lot more about you than a test score. Now, colleges are looking for well-rounded students with many interests. Is that a myth or a truth? Myth. It is so much better for you to decide on two or three activities and really show your accomplishments. Now, I get it. If you're a ninth grader, new school, you don't know if a meeting's going to start every week, if the moderator or the president of the club is really engaged in activities. So sure, in beginning of ninth grade, go cl- sign up for a lot of clubs and then narrow it down after you got a, you know, like a sample test of all of that stuff. All right, let's do some more. All right. As a college bound student, you have relied primarily on your parents and your knowledge and research as you weigh the difficulties of the college admissions. So the que- so does that mean, is that a myth or a truth that you're going to have a harder time in the college process or not? Well, it depends, right? Did you really do your homework? If you did and you talked to the college representative, fantastic. If it's mainly your parents or guardian doing all the talking or paying someone else to do it for you, Well, how much do you really know about that campus, right? I can't tell you how many statements I hear from students that seems like they're answering the question what they think the admissions committee wants to hear versus who they are, right? Think about it. It's your your interview on paper, right? So it's really important, right? So it's really important for you to look at that, okay? Colleges, um, here's another one, colleges, won't notice if I just copy and paste from one of those booklets about the best college essay statements to use. True or false, or excuse me, myth or true. That's a myth, right? You know, they remember, they're going to get a sense of who you are. I actually was reading um, about one college counselor who said that um, in one of the admissions things, a student really was talking about something totally different about themselves versus what the recommendation was, like uh, talking about their accomplishments and stuff. And it didn't, was not in sync with the whole application. Remember, they're reviewing everything very quickly, mind you, but they're reviewing everything um, out there. Okay. Selling yourself means putting a positive spin on everything. Is that a myth or true? That's a myth. Just as well as bragging about yourself is a bad thing. What does that mean? Well, remember, sometimes, I don't know about you, but I've learned so much about failures in my life. And so you could talk about a mistake or hiccups, how you've grown. Just keep in mind, this is not a therapy issue, right? So this is not something where something you talk about to your therapist or your counselor, you may not necessarily want to put on your statement. But if there's a failure in your life that you really grown from that motivate you to accomplish other things, go for it. And remember, on you know, honesty is really important, not modesty in the college application process. Um, so you should know this answer then. Weaknesses are great learning experiences and failures can make great essay topics. So be sure to consider any and all meaningful experience you've had in your life. That is true, right? So it's really important. Okay, here's another one. You have to be a leader in everything you do in order to appear desirable. Is that a myth or truth? Myth. And also know about what type of leadership. If you have a job supporting yourself, leader. If you have responsibilities at home, leader. I had a student who actually filed their parents' taxes. Amazing leader. Um, How many of you file your own taxes? I I still... I don't know if I met any adults who file their own taxes except the my accountant. All right. Learn how to do that. You save some money. All right. So you should be doing far more than minimum number of community service hours, but you should also be doing something you love and doing it over a long period of time. 
True or false? True. Now, I remember freshman year, I had a student says, oh, I have to stay with crew because my parents says this is how I'll get into colleges. But they hated it. They dreaded it. And I'm like, do you like do what you love? Because just because you're in a sport doesn't mean it's guaranteed. And everyone's like, oh, it has to be all four years. I'm like, this is not a, like a course requirement, like four years of English. I mean, colleges, most colleges love students take four years of language, but not everyone does that. And they still get accepted to colleges. So just keep that in mind, right? So there's a lot of rumor veils. And guess what? You could actually speak with the college rep. There's a representative from each campus who could talk to you about this. Okay. Um, so don't be shy, brag, but that's why they call it a brag sheet. Be proud of who you are and all that you achieved. Can you? Can I do that in an interview and speaking with them? Myth or truth? Truth. Now, being cocky is a different thing, right? So if you're talking your head's up uh, really big and growing, that's a different story. Um, being someone that doesn't really show that you have care for a rest of humanity, eh, that's a different issue. There was an article that I, I read where someone talks about hunting and someone's point of view is like, oh, that's great. They could talk about bonding with their parent or being in nature, but the essay all focused on killing animals. And it brought a bad taste for a lot of the committee members. So always be mindful. There's someone else reading this. Um, so keep that in mind and you don't know who's reading it. So be mindful on there. Okay. Um, a high score on an SAT guarantees you a spot in a top, um, nation's college false, right? There are some schools that are test flexible, like Georgetown university and others where, um, testing is important. But like I said, uh, 1500 colleges are going test optional for fall 2022 and Stanford University was one of the first ones and one of the most selective ones. Um, I can still take a SAT subject test to show um, my worth in uh, being a great test taker, myth or truth. That is a big myth because guess what? There is no more subject test. No more subject tests uh, out there. You could take the AP exams. Again, it's not required for the colleges. If you feel that you're going to do really well in that, that's fine. Um, but the class is great. My personal favorite is taking community college classes. That's something that's really important. Okay. Are you ready for the next one? Here we go. All right. Um, does it look not good for me to work? Is it better for me to do an internship at my, my dad's job versus a job at Subway? A paid job is a paid responsibility. And that I, I remember there's been a couple of college panels and they're like, oh my God, I love when you work. Oh my God. I love when they take transferable community colleges. Remember in California alone, it's 115. There's a lot across the nation. Um, and there's so many that you could do online. Um, so that is a great option. Um, I have a fantastic personal statement, aka college essay, Everyone says, oh my God, it's the most incredible one. This will get me into a college by itself. Myth or truth? Myth. Remember, they're looking at everything. The transcript, the type of courses you take, your activities. Um, some campuses are even looking. Have you opened your email from them? Um, you know, did you desire, did you do a virtual tour? You know, have you visited their campus, right? Virtual is just as good. Have you reached out to them? If your school is able to visit you, did you have a meeting? Did you schedule in your... So plan ahead, right? So remember, for everything when you're wondering if it's myth or truth, check the college website. I remember today someone said, oh, Boston University hasn't announced that their test option for fall 22. Da -da -da -da. Went into the Google machine, typed the question, made sure it was from Boston University, and it is test optional. So you check the website, make sure it's up to date and for the class that you're applying for. So for any younger kids, right, who's not applying for fall 22, everything is up in the air. So guess what? Email the college um, admissions. A lot of times it's just admissions with an S at the end at college.edu, but double check the website and email them and ask, when will you find out? What would you recommend? Do you think it'd be preparing? You know, a lot of them would say, probably, I don't know. We'll find out spring of your, the end of your junior year. 
and a lot of them will tell